Trolls of the Troll Hunter All about the superhuman, aggressive, gigantic beings. So many times we come across the word troll in today's internet-dominated world, which is an internet slang referring to a person who posts aggressive, hostile comments to provoke or harass the reader. But in mythologies of Norwegian folklore, a troll is an ugly, superhuman creature dwelling in isolated caves in mountains or rocks, usually avoiding human habitation. The first movie on this subject is Troll, directed by John Carl Buchler, released in 1986. After 14 years in 2010, writer-director Andre Ovredal presented the Norwegian mockumentary The Troll Hunter. Despite its low budget, the movie brims with entertainment. The film, using found footage, hovers around a group of Norwegian film students trying to feature a documentary on mysterious bear killings for their project. In the process, they get involved with the suspected poacher Hans, and they become a part of his true motive of hunting down real-life trolls. It is worth mentioning that the trolls were designed with 3D modeling software based on sketches by Theodore Kill Jason, a famous Norwegian illustrator. The shaky camera movements add to the wow factor of the film, intensifying the spine-chilling atmosphere that the film builds. The innovative storyline of combining folklore with a real-life action thriller mockumentary truly deserves appreciation. The movie casts a few Norwegian comedians along with some unknown actors. Apart from being a blockbuster in its native country, the film received positive feedback from critics worldwide. The picturesque sceneries of Norway adds to the charms of the film. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Storyline of The Troll Hunter A group of students from Volda University, Thomas, Johanna, and cameraman Kali decided to make a documentary on mysterious bear killings as their college project. At one such site, where a bear was poached, the interviewed hunters revealed their suspicion that the bear tracks were fake. But their suspicion of artificial bear tracks was absolutely rejected by Finn Haugen, the head of the Norwegian Wildlife Board. After a thorough investigation, the students visit their main suspect, the poacher Hans, played by famous Norwegian comedian Otto Jespersen. The students constantly follow Hans to grab an exclusive interview, only to get rejected every time. One night, they decide to follow Hans into a forest where they encounter strange lights and screams. Suddenly, they find Hans running back towards them to their surprise, and all he could scream was, TROLL! Thomas was attacked and bitten, but he didn't exactly know what had attacked him. They hurriedly escaped in Hans's Land Rover as their vehicle unexpectedly was turned upside down with the tires missing. Eventually, Hans confessed that he was hunting trolls and not bears. The students were cynical about Hans's confession and sought permission to accompany him on his next expedition. Finally, Hans agreed under the condition that they obey him strictly. The next day, the students were asked to cover themselves with their slimy troll scent so that the trolls would not smell humans. Then, Hans confirmed that no one among them is a believer in Jesus, as a troll is famous for tracking the smell of Christian blood. Hans also reveals his flash gun, which emits powerful UV rays. This flash gun was a secret weapon, a substitute for the sunlight that turns a troll into stone. That is why they only stroll out at night. Subsequently, the group confronted a gigantic three-headed monstrous troll. The students were shocked and panic-stricken to see a troll in real life, and they ran helplessly towards the car. The troll followed them, but fortunately Hans used his flash gun and converted it to stone. Hans requested the students to hide the truth about his secret mission as he was frustrated with his work with low remuneration. He also admitted that Finn actually worked for Troll Security Service, while Hans was engaged to hunt any troll when it went near human habitation. The students understood that all the bear killings were Finn's idea to disguise the existence of trolls from the real world. Hans also stated the fact that the trolls were getting aggressive day by day, and Hans was supposed to collect a blood sample from a troll and send it to the pathological lab of TSS for examination. Finn arrived at the site with his team to put fake bear tracks to suppress the truth. He told the students that they were not permitted to keep any tape that has records to reveal the truth. The students ignored Finn's threatening words and set out on their next expedition with Hans. This time, their target was a different type of troll, in a separate area. They set up a trap by leaving some goats on the bridge to tempt the trolls to eat them. Hans successfully obtained a blood sample from the troll and took it to the lab. The doctor said that he would need several days to reveal the report. So, Hans and the group set out to investigate an unprecedented event of uprooted trees at a nearby farm. 
The investigation led the team to an abandoned mine, which was a den of trolls, but to their dismay, the trolls returned unexpectedly, and the group was stranded inside the cave. Callie apologized and confessed that he, being a Christian, had been responsible for attracting the trolls. The trolls tracked down the group while smelling Callie. They ran for their lives to reach sunlight outside the cave, but the trolls killed Callie. The students hired a new camera woman, Melissa, who was Muslim, but Hans was unsure whether the trolls would spare her. Their next expedition was to enter the troll territory, where the group found Jotnar, a giant mountain troll. In the meantime, Thomas started feeling sick, and to their horror, they learned that the blood samples of trolls revealed that they had been infected with rabies, also infecting Thomas as a troll bit him on his first expedition. With tremendous effort, Hans managed to convert the Jotnar into stone. Before the camera blacked out, a truck was seen approaching down the road. Finn and his agents arrived at the spot to confiscate the tapes made by the students. Thomas ran with the camera to save the recordings but finally collapsed on the road. The audience was told in an epilogue that there was no trace of any student, and the movie concluded with Norwegian Prime Minister Jan Stoltenberg confessing about the existence of trolls. Are trolls truly living creatures? There are a lot of exciting stories about trolls. Some people think that trolls are not true living creatures as they do not possess any free will. They were created from the anger and disgust of Melkor only to enhance his army strength. Hence, they cannot be categorized with the usual living world. Another controversy states that when animals eat souls accidentally or intentionally, they are totally dominated by the consumed souls. These animals then lose their identity and become trolls. Hardly any sector of the society accepts the trolls due to their witch effect, leaving them with no option other than isolation from the remaining world. The Troll Hunter takes up the trail from this mythological character, as the trolls in this film have similar traits as depicted in the mythology. <laughs> trolls are seen in The Troll Hunter. The movie featured the trolls as bipedal, carnivorous, non-intelligent mammals who inhabited remote areas in Norway. The trolls seem to have many species, and they were known to survive till a thousand or to twelve hundred years. The film even offered a scientific explanation for them turning into stone in sunlight. Their body was not adapted to convert vitamin D to calcium. Thus, exposure to sunlight results in a series of biochemical reactions in their body, leading to an explosion of young trolls, while the older trolls were seen to calcify within a few seconds. Hence, UV light flash guns were the only weapons to combat trolls, as no bullet could penetrate their thick skin. We might also wonder why the trolls hate Christians so much. This was also explained in the movie. The Christians were responsible for destroying the power of trolls in the 13th century. The trolls lost their importance and were despised by the Christians. Consequently, the trolls moved away from the civilized world to hide in mountains and forests, thus hating Christian people. Even the sound of church bells made them agitated. Henceforth, the trolls had maintained their distance from human civilization, but in the Troll Hunter movie, the trolls showed aggression and had begun approaching human habitation. Later in the plot, we find that rabies was the reason for this abnormal behavioral trait in them. Various species of trolls found in the movie explored. Let us now discuss the various species of trolls found in this movie. The first troll could not be identified as it was not revealed but it definitely terrified Hans as he was panic-stricken and warned the students about that troll chasing them. Thomas got bitten by the troll, and it was through this bite he got infected with rabies. They managed to save themselves from the troll's attack, but this incident managed to inject fear and made them more determined to divulge the truth. During the second expedition, the group encountered the giant three-headed troll, also known as Tussle Lad. It was as tall as the pine trees of the forest. What a terrifying experience for the students who encountered a troll for the first time. Tussle Lad was quite agitated, which was later came to be known as being the side effect of rabies. This giant three-headed troll chased the group until Hans calcified it with his flash gun, emitting UV rays. Hans later explained that Tussle Lad indeed did not have three heads, but they were head-like growths used by it to terrify other male trolls or attract female trolls. The next troll encountered by Hans and the students was Regelfant, who appeared on the bridge where the group had kept live goats as bait. The Regelfant is smaller than the Tussle Lad in size, yet it was much bigger than a human being. He attacked the group and almost grabbed Hans, and was about to bite him, but Hans wore an armor suit that saved him. Despite this horrible strike, Hans was able to collect his blood sample, 
which was to be examined in the TSS lab. Dovre Gubbins were the final species of trolls that the group encountered in a cave situated in an abandoned mine. These species are one of the smallest species of trolls who are slightly taller than human beings. Unlike previous trolls, their bodies were covered with brown fur. There was a pack of Dovre Gubbins dwelling in the abundant cave who returned earlier than expected. During the combat between the group and the trolls, Hans managed to slay some trolls, but unfortunately, Kali was killed by the Dovre Gubbins. Last but not least, the final assignment of Hans took them to the Jotna, which was the most powerful and dangerous species of trolls. The Jotna, which appeared at the climax of the movie, was almost 200 feet tall. It was already agitated with the effect of rabies, and it savagely attacked Hans and the students. Unfortunately, when most needed, the flash gun was not working and required fixing. This Jotna, infected with rabies, was the main reason other trolls were getting scattered from their dwelling places. After tremendous effort, Hans was finally able to convert the Jotna to stone and save themselves. Finally, we conclude that this found footage horror movie is a delightful watch with plenty of action, suspense, and thrill. Overdahl had explained every minute detail scientifically in the short span of the movie. Chris Columbus and CJ Entertainment and Media wanted to remake the film after the substantial positive response of the critics, but in 2016, Overdahl confirmed that the remake was cancelled and the franchise rights remain with him. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks, everyone.